Recently, Supreme Master Ching Hai graciously allowed our association members to gather for an international seminar. It was a joyous occasion as Master and disciples reunited to meditate and pray for peace. During her visit to meet with our association members, Supreme Master Ching Hai also spoke of the teachings of past masters and answered the spiritual questions of fellow initiates. Throughout the ages, compassionate enlightened masters have urged people to surrender to the greater universal power by seeking the divine within from which all other goodness and happiness follow. This message was echoed again in the Sufist story the saint and the sinner, which Supreme Master Ching Hai shared with our association members during the international gathering on December 21st, 2008. Indris Shah. What means Shah? Huh? He means king. Uh, this is a story from, I think, from Iran. Huh? I like Sufi story very much. Because I have a lot of story. Yeah. Not just talk, lecture, but story, you know? Then you can tell children and women everybody like. Okay, let's begin with a story called The Saint and the Sinner. Mm. A very nice story. I like the book called The Wisdom of the Idiot. <laughs> it's a very funny book. I guess they make fun of themselves too, the same, yeah? Mm. Call themselves idiot. Lao Tzu also say that, you know? He say that the wise one look like the idiot. There was a, one time eh, a devish devotee who believed that it was his uh, job to uh, uh, correct those sinners, yeah, uh, the ones who do evil things in the world. He thinks he's very saintly. He's a devish. Devish is one of the Muslim tradition, eh? Mm. The devish. They, they dance a lot. They're happy people. At that time, you still have good master. Uh, maybe you still have now. Yeah, it's hard to find enlightened master. Also, even hard to find enlightened devish. Ne? So this one is a devish, and he thought he is very enlightened, very saintly. So he took upon himself to go and reproach those who were doing no good, according to his standard. And he also wanted to preach to them spiritual ideas, reproach them for what they're doing wrong and tell them what they must do, they should do. Some busybody, you know. Have you like my, my clothes? Yes. 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 And yes. Everything new now is like that, yeah? You can also do that, you paint it on, you know? Or you uh, stick on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so he believed that if he teach them the wrong thing that they're doing, tell them not to do it, and tell them the right thing, then they're going to find the truth and the right path. But in this book, the, the author wrote that this devish, however, did not know that a teacher is not only the one who tells others to do things by acting through fixed concepts, but the teacher must also know, you know, the innermost situation, the innermost situation of himself and of the person he wants to teach also. But this devish did not know because I mean, if you don't know it, then you might suffer a reverse uh, effect. Yeah. Instead of wanting to be good and positive, if he doesn't know the inner situation, maybe not inner connection with God, maybe, or not the inner connection of the person that he wants to reproach, then the effect will not be as he wants 
but it may be opposite. Yeah, that's what the book wants to tell us. But of course, he doesn't know all this. So, because of that, one day he has found himself a victim. Wow, he found a guy who is addicted to gambling. Put money and <laughs> want to gain a lot, but mostly lose a lot. <laughs> so this uh, so-called saintly devil, you know, took upon himself as a job to cure this man's habit. So every day the sinner, the gambler, left his house for the casino. <laughs> the dervish uh, wait outside his house already. Every time he left for the casino to gamble, the dervish put a stone uh, opposite of his house, in front of his door. So every time he marked it like that, he intended for the gambler to be reminded of his evil sin, so that he cannot forget that he's a sinner every day. You know, hopefully one day he will cure himself. So the gambler, each time he left his house and go for the casino, he felt very, very guilty. And each time he come back, <laughs> he saw another stone on the pile outside of his house. Did you ever see those stone piling on top of each other? Oh, the Tibetan does that a lot. Maybe it's a similar story. Maybe the person who went on pilgrim put a stone there for the sin of his neighbor or something, <laughs> or maybe himself. Yes, in the old tradition, there was one Chinese woman. She also cure herself this way. Whenever she does the wrong thing, she put a black bean in the left.